at this moment in hockey history. The Nashville Predators currently find themselves in fourth place in the Central Division after 73 games skated. That's right, nine games to go in the season. They record a 43, 26, and 490 points. Has the Predators four points shy of an automatic qualifying playoff spot of third place in the Central Division. Find themselves eight points behind second, 11 points now out of first. So now double digits behind first place, but going the other direction, eight points ahead of fifth place, 11 points ahead of sixth place. All of these things will make more sense when we recap the full standings here in just a couple of seconds. The Predators' next game will take place on the road. It will be against the Colorado Avalanche. The Preds have a record of 22-11-3 and three on the road. Those 22 wins represent the second most in the Central Division behind just the Dallas Stars who are in first place. The Preds have scored 240 goals on the season. They've given up 218. They have a goal differential of plus 22. Now, the updated standings in the Central Division. The Dallas Stars are in first place with 101 points, and they are the first team in the Central Division to clinch a playoff spot. They've got the X next to their name. The Colorado Avalanche have fallen three points behind the Dallas Stars with 98 points, and the Winnipeg Jets have fallen seven points behind first place Dallas. So the three-team weave has loosened up for the first time in quite some time. Then you'll find the National Predators, the first team on the outside, looking into the automatic three qualifying spots. The Preds have 90 points, four points behind Winnipeg at this moment in time. And then the St. Louis Blues in fifth place at 82 points. Minnesota is still alive at 79 points, but then eliminated the Arizona Coyotes and the Chicago Blackhawks at the bottom, seventh and eighth in the division, 67 points and 47 points respectively. Now the wild card which is also of critical importance at this moment. The Nashville Predators are in wild card number one spot with 90 points. The LA Kings have dropped now back down into the wild card race and are in the wild card two spot after being surpassed by the Las Vegas Golden Knights. So the LA Kings at 87 points are in the second wild card spot. Then on the outside looking in, the St. Louis Blues at 82 points, the Minnesota Wild at 79 points. Everybody else is unrealistic as part of the race. And honestly, Minnesota getting pretty close to that cut off as well so the predators still have an eight point cushion on their wild card spot but the la kings are very close to the predators only three points back but the predators still very much in control of their playoff spot now the nashville predators upcoming week ahead and we're getting close to the very end of the schedule just nine games to go after this game in denver the preds back home to face off against the boston bruins just the colorado avalanche and the boston bruins back to back that's not that easy of a task so the bruins on tuesday night at bridgestone arena thursday the st louis blues saturday the new york islanders the predators will be in in Long Island at New York to take on the Islanders and on the 7th of April at the New Jersey Devils back home on Bridgetown Arena Ice on the 9th of April to face off against the Winnipeg Jets. Don't want to look too far ahead, but man, do I want to start looking ahead at that game. That's going to be an incredibly important game in the Central Division. The regular season series between the National Predators and the Colorado Avalanche has been rather lopsided and one-sided with the Avs having 98 points being second place in the Central. You would think it's gone all Colorado's way, but it has actually gone all of Nashville's way. It's the third regular season meeting between these two Central Division rivals. The first came all the way back on November the 20th. The Predators scored a 4-3 victory at Bridgestone Arena. Soros got the win, 26 of 29. Forsberg scored two. Trenton and Luzon with one apiece. Georgiev got the loss for Colorado. 26 out of 30 was his stat line. Cogliano, Taves, and Nachuskin scored the goals for the Colorado Avalanche at Bridgestone Arena. They would meet again on March the 2nd. The National Predators would score another victory on home ice, 5-1 to one this time. Soros, 25 out of 26 for the victory. Glass picking up three goals in that game, getting the hat trick in an incredibly fun and emotional night at Bridgestone Arena. Novak and O'Reilly also chipped in goals in that game. Georgiev took the loss for the second time this season against the Predators, 30 out of 34. McKinnon did break through and get on the sheet for Colorado in that game with one goal. So the Preds are 2-0 versus Colorado this year. They've secured four out of four possible points, and they have outscored the Avalanche 9-4. to four. And considering the impressive nature of the Avalanche's offense, that in itself is a remarkable statistic for this season that the Predators have outscored the Avs through two games 9-4. to four. Let's 
talk about the opponent, the Colorado Avalanche. Let's start by mentioning again that they're in second place in the Central Division. They have a record of 46, 21, and 6, 98 points. Has them three points shy of first place Dallas. So they are very much competing for a division championship at this moment in time. On home ice, an impressive record of 28, 7, and 1. 28 home wins represents the number one in the Central Division in that particular category. 272 goals scored. I told you, prolific. 217 against. That's a goal differential of plus 55. When it comes to the Colorado Avalanche's most recent stretch of hockey, let's talk about the most recent five games they played. Back on March the 19th, it was a 4-3 to three win at the St. Louis Blues. On the 22nd of March, it was a 6-1 to one win versus the Columbus Blue Jackets. On the 24th of March, it was a 5-4 to four overtime win versus the Pittsburgh Penguins. On the 26th of March, a 2-1 to one loss versus Montreal. And most recently, on the 28th, a 3-2 to two shootout loss versus the New York Rangers. Georgiev got the start, took the loss in the shootout. He went 23 of 25 in that game. That was a very, very exciting game between the Rangers and the Colorado Avalanche. When it comes to the NHL rankings and the numbers, some impressive numbers on the Colorado Avalanche side of things in the goals for category. It starts right there at 3.7 per game. Again, 272 on the season in 73 games. It works up to 3.7 per game. That's first best overall in the NHL. When it comes to the National Purs in the same statistical metric, 12th best in the NHL at 3.26. That 3.26, though, is a pretty good number and represents uh, the highest the Purs have been all season long in the goals against category the Colorado Avalanche not too shabby right here either 2.95 is 12th best in the league but they overcome that metric by outscoring everybody when it comes to goals against for the first 2.99 that's good they're holding it under three that's 14th even with the massive amount of goals that uh, was just put into that particular category Shots on goal, 33 for Denver, for Colorado, for the Avalanche, the Denver-Colorado Avalanche, Jesus, six overall in the NHL, and it comes to shots for for the Nashville Purs, 31.7 on net per game is 10th overall in the NHL. Shots against, 30.2 for Nashville's 20th, the Avs only giving up 29.5 shots against per game, that's 10th best in the NHL. Special teams, uh, you're going to find a decided advantage for the Colorado Avalanche in both of these categories, the Avs converting on the power play, 24.3%, that's a great number. Seventh overall in the NHL, 61 conversions, 251 power play opportunities. Predators on the other side, 20.9% conversion rate, 17th, 50 conversions out of 239 opportunities. On the penalty kill, again, Colorado well ahead, 81.9% is their kill rate, ninth best in the NHL, 42 power play goals given up against on the season. The Predators, 77.1% kill rate is 22nd in the National Hockey League. They've given up 50 power play goals against. They've given up eight more power play goals than the Colorado Avalanche. So when it comes to the six statistical metrics that we talk about, the Colorado Avalanche have four, five in the top 10. The only one being outside the top 10 is their uh, goals against the 2.95, which is 12th. But again, with the power play being seventh, their goals four being first, shots on goal being sixth. That is an impressive offensive resume. And the Colorado Avalanche are over well easily able to overcome a lot of times the one metric that they are deficient in. And I deficient their 12th overall in the league it's somewhat unfair of a label to be there I, I don't take it back though it was a good word to use I was trying to think of a good word to use when it comes to individual statistics every team in the NHL has highly impressive players but you know the Colorado Avalanche I, I always say they have every team has highly impressive players the Colorado Avalanche have players that are on another level they simply do Nathan McKinnon has to me I, I understand there's a lot of discussion a lot of argument to have uh, he he's the MVP this season and to me, he's easily been one of the, if not the best player in the NHL the last couple of years. And I understand he may not have had the statistics of one or two other players at times. Nathan McKinnon is a dominant force at any moment. And this season, 45 goals, 70 assists, 123 points right now at this moment 123 points he has one goal uh, against the Predators this season Rantanen is always tough against the National Parks 39 goals on the season he's looking to get to that 40 goal plateau 58 assists 97 points I don't like those numbers Rantanen's looking for a 40 goal plateau and 100 points on the season on home ice on the Saturday afternoon Cal McCars at 18 and 60 for 78 points he's going to look to show off because he's got Roman Yossi on the other side of things that's something that we need to talk about for just a second before we wrap this up and choose 
Ovechkin, 26 goals, 24 assists for 50 points. Druin is at 14 goals and 32 assists for 46 points. Over on the Nashville Predators side of things, they have impressive individuals as well. Philip Forsberg, 41 goals, 42 assists, 83 points. Remarkable offensive consistency, remarkable health consistency this season for Philip Forsberg. He is truly putting up the best season of his career. Yossi is at 19 goals and 57 assists for 76 points. Nyquist, 21 goals, 45 assists for 66 points. O'Reilly, 25 and 36 for 61. Tommy Novak, all he does is make plays for 39 points this season. The breakdown goes 15 and 24. And just again, want to bring up Yossi at 76 points. Makar at 78 points going head-to-head in this matchup. Look for both of them to show out. And, and Roman Yossi has surged up in the possibilities of winning the Norris Trophy uh, this season. He is finishing a strong as you can. Anticipated goaltender matchup, Georgiev has played two times against the Predators this season. He's taken two losses. He's 37-15-4 and four overall in the year, though he's first overall in the NHL in victories for goaltenders. He has a 9-0-3 save percentage, 2.80 goals against average and moved the puck. Two shutouts. Two, two shutouts on the season. But first overall in victories. On the other side of things, UC Saros 32-22-4 on 9-0-6 save percentage, 2.83 goals against average. Three shutouts on the season. UC Saros is 32 victories represent fifth best in the NHL. So you have the number one versus number five goaltenders in wins coming up in this game. And UC Saros has scored two victories head-to-head against Georgiev this season against Colorado Avalanche. Highly anticipated, interesting game. Big Central Division points on the line. The Preds, eight points behind the Colorado Avalanche, but eyeballing those Winnipeg Jets just ahead of them by only four points. A critical, critical set of points on the line in Denver, Colorado with a little bit of an earlier start than usual. So make sure you make note of that that's gonna do it for the preview segment let's go back and talk about what happened <laughs> it's the reverse sports full game recap it's coming up next if you want to skip ahead 10 minutes it's 10 minutes <laughs> 